we've been spending our whole lives in Minecraft survival mode, and now we're going to get to play Minecraft creative mode, you know? And, and that's like the, um, yeah, I, I think that really is like the, 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 the really exciting future that we're heading towards. You know, I, I think the, um, the, the main thing I would just call out is like, I think human creativity, human passion, you know, desire to, to, to build things and meaning, I don't think that stops because we have some really smart AI or anything like that, right? Yeah. And I think we're, if anything, we're gonna be able to spend a lot more time doing that. You know, we're gonna do really cool things. You know, one of the things that I always think about is like, if you just imagine folks from thousands of years ago, you know, looking at us today, like sitting here talking about this, right? And it's, it's funny to think that in the sense that like, probably most of, of what, you know, most of these white collar jobs out there, it's it would be crazy for them to even think about it as work. You know, it's yeah. like you sit there, you have you you know, you're talking in the room with other people. Maybe you're pushing buttons on this thing or whatever, and you call that work. You know, you're not in the fields, you're not actually like pushing things around, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 I think that we will go through like another level of that, honestly, with AI, where it's uh, it we will similarly, it's you know, we might so call it work and think of it work, but it's going to look more and more like really pursuing your own passion and building great things and building really cool things. And I think that, um, yeah, and, and I think that that's gonna, you know, it's look, it's at the end of the day, I think we've made a ton of progress over the last, you know, thousands of years, but but there is still like a lot of suffering, there's still like a lot of, you know, um, things, things that we don't need to have basically. And, and I think getting to the point where people can really just do what they want to do and, and, and build really exciting things and, and put things into their, their life's work um, that, that they create is, is really exciting. I mean, it's, it, 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 with Devin especially, I mean, we're all programmers ourselves, obviously, and so we love coding. You know, we love building software, and, and I think one of the big things that is really, really exciting about it is, yeah, you don't, you don't stop building software just because, you know, you can have AI that helps you write code, right? I, I, I think the... Um, I, I think if anything, yeah, we're going to have way, way, way more great products and we're going to have way more great ideas that we're going to be able to bring to reality because it's so easy. You know, everyone has so many ideas that they have of, of what they want to do and what they want to build. And, um, and being able to turn that into reality is just really exciting. So we're recording this before the Reagan economic forum I'm going to this week. So I'm, I'm thinking in economic terms yeah. right now. And I, and I love what you said with this like positive, like Minecraft trader mode. Yeah. And, and so in economics terms, that means that like productivity goes way, 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 way up and it's massively disinflationary and you just create things cheaply, whether it's farming, whether it's building, whether it's healthcare, whether it's education. How do you think of the timeline? This is, I know it's a kind of mm -hmm. unfair question because you're thinking a very positive vision yeah. of this 10 years out. Like, do we start to see productivity just shoot way up in the next few years? Like, when should we expect this? Or how do you think about that? Yeah, and, and I think we have, a, honestly, we have a, a, a special lens into this because I'd say code is honestly the fastest growing use case of AI out there. And and I think it's, <clears throat> I, I think it is representative in the sense that, um, look, it's it, in code it is, it is real. It is very clear, you know, that that if, if you're not using AI, you are just slower. But but I don't think that 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 you know I, I don't think that that leads to kind of a negative for us in the sense, if anything, it's it means that we all get to build a lot more and we all get to do a lot more, right? And, and so I, I think that is kind of the shift that we're going to see in a lot of these fields. Um, I think. I think on a per person basis, each person is just going to have their own team of AI assistants that's going to help them do a lot more. And, and it's actually amazing if you think about it. The U.S. economy is well, it's like a twenty trillion dollar economy, depending on different ways of measuring it. So if you make productivity go up ten percent, that's a two trillion dollar a year, which which equity wise is a twenty trillion dollar thing in one year. Yeah. Right. So it's even five percent so is in the order of a ten trillion dollars of equity value. So it's actually fascinating. Like the positive sum nature of this all stuff works. It's worth tens of trillions of dollars. And so, like, how do you think of the possible value and opportunity of something like Devon? Like, I, I, I think this actually is a multi-trillion dollar opportunity because it's fixing such a big space. Is that is that the right way to think about these things? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I think for us, it is the, you know, the central question that always roots us in basically all of our product decisions and all of our strategic direction and so on is, is just like, what is the future of software engineering? You know, I, I think it's, um, I, I think, in startups, people often get caught up in, you know, kind of figuring out fancy tactics and things like that. But it always, obviously, it always starts from from what is, you know, what is the future and what is the value that we're going to provide. And, and a lot of it for us is just that the fun thing about this space is that the answer to that question basically changes every couple months in the sense that, you know, you hit a new tier of capabilities, you, you build models that can do these, these crazy new things. And that changes the whole experience of like, what is the right way that humans should be working with AI to write code? What's a you recent know? tier that you feel like you've hit? Can you give us some insight? Yeah, yeah. One of one of the big ones that 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 we've just rolled out actually is is um, basically the ability for humans and AI to just 
you can use AI to interactively plan and scope out the task. And then once that's ready, you can just hand that off and go. Um, the similar thing is just even, you know, getting to the point where every time you file a ticket in Slack or a linear or Jira or whatever service you use, you know, it's, you just, you just have your coding agent go and work on that. Right. And, wow. and I think it's, it's crazy to to think about, cause you know, a few years ago, for example, like the, um, um, you know, GitHub Copilot and, and others were kind of some of the first to, to really kind of pioneer the AI coding space. And, you know, this single line where it would give you a suggestion which you could tab complete, like yeah. that was all you could do in code, you know, and it was yeah. because we had models that were pretty pretty exciting, but obviously they, they weren't good enough that you would trust them with with these bigger things, right? Yeah. And I think every, uh, one, one of the really cool things actually is, is like, is a, a crazy stat, which is if you look over the past few years since that kind of tab completion era, you can kind of think of an AI model or an AI system um, in terms of how much work it can do in between interventions from a human, if that makes sense. Um, and so it's yeah. like, you know, can it do five minutes of work, of human work straight in between, you know, an inter intervention? And Because once the errors get to be too much, it just has to stop, basically. But it doesn't always yeah. know to stop, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like until like the human has to step in and give more feedback or something like that. Yeah. And, and the crazy thing is over the last like three, four years, that number has basically, it, it's doubled approximately every three months. Wow. In code. Um, which is, you know, 2x every three months is four doubles every year, which is 16x, right? And it's, I mean, it is kind of, you know, over three years, that's about 4,000x, which is, which is correct. What which is it is, over a decade? <laughs> <laughs> Two to the 40. <laughs> which is a, a lot. It's about a trillion that's a big x, number. yeah. Uh, a big and number. so, so we'll, obviously, we'll, we'll see how long that continues. And so far, it has, shows no signs of slowing down. But, you know, it really has, over the last few years, gone from systems where it can just just complete the line for you and just do that two seconds of typing for you versus now we have systems that are going to do hours of work. You know, they're going to go solve a, build a feature or solve a bug. That, I think it's about, a, I think it's about a quadrillion, hours. by the way, Scott, not yeah. a trillion. It's a quadrillion, right? If, or am I wrong? Two to the, the 40? Is it, that's a million squares. It's, it's, it's a million squares of trillion. Damn it. Yeah. Can we delete that part? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I keep trying to get it. I lose. I'm terrible. Yeah, it's a million squares of trillion. This is really bad. This is why I shouldn't challenge him. <laughs> you had me, you had me, you had me I got, I got you second. scared. Yeah, I know. That's funny because that would be a big deal. If I, yeah, I was yeah. like, okay. I was, gonna, I was gonna ask you to cut that in. No, there, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know, don't worry. You're right, Scott.